Have you been thinking about purchasing a home here in Canada? Or maybe you've already owned a home for a number of years and you just forget how the whole home buying process works? Well, this video is going to be for you. I'm going over the nine steps of purchasing a home right here in Canada. All right, so as we jump right into it, um, looking at it, number one is outlining what are your needs versus your wants. So you need to decipher between the two. So the needs are the absolute must have, things that you cannot, that you would not want to give up in, in a home. Maybe it's having a bathtub, maybe it's having three bedrooms, maybe it's having three bedrooms all on one level. Everybody's needs are going to be completely different. Um, a number of people have a number of wants and the other things wants are like the nice to have things that um, you would like to have but not necessarily a deal breaker some things like you know a refrigerator that has a water dispenser could be a want or a hot tub could be another want something that you can maybe add but it's not really a deal breaker so decipher between your needs and wants and really try to get the needs list you know as tight as possible and, and chat about it with your spouse or your other significant other people that you're going to be living in the home with you just to make sure that lines up with what you're actually looking for because it'll save you a lot of time in the home search process as as we go through it and you know it's can be a deal breaker on it number two is really knowing your options on the type of home you have so once you know your needs and your wants it kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking for um with the with the type of house that you're looking for so are you looking for a single detached house um so a home on its own are you okay with a semi-detached house um where you know maybe it's a duplex and you have two homes side by side attached um, but you still have your own yard or are you looking for a condo where you have communal entrance and everything like that or you know would a townhouse suffice so really when you look at the needs and wants uh, and then you also go to know your options there and you can kind of decipher because if you need a hot tub well you're probably going to need to either get into a townhouse or uh, maybe a, a condo that has a hot tub or else you'll have to be a single family or semi-detached but if you're looking for something with a great workout space that sort of thing maybe a condo is, is for you and that really helps decipher what type of condo units we're going to be looking at and and really kind of nails it down and will save you a lot of time in your home search process things can always change too as well so it's not like you set these all in you can change as you as you go and what you find in your price range all right so number three is really just kind of nailing it down uh and deciphering really what kind of neighborhood you want to be in and so this will kind of really go into uh, the top two your needs wants and then knowing what type of house you want because each different neighborhood has a different type of housing. So in the downtown area, I'm speaking for Kelowna uh, as that's my market here. The downtown area is really going to higher density where you're just gonna see a lot more townhomes, condo units and that of, of the like going up. So those are things just to keep watch of while you're looking at it. You're not necessarily gonna maybe get a, a brand new single family house in the downtown area because those are few and far between and maybe it doesn't make sense for you to do it because a lot of those are moving to higher density so that's just something to just to take a look at if you're looking for um, walkability uh, transportation those are other important factors that you really have to take into account as well uh, proximity to work that sort of thing so you just need to consider a number of different various areas and really and help you know what you want you can also nail in on a few and just kind of see check them out and uh, drive-bys are usually great uh, usually always advise drive-bys just drive through the neighborhoods and really see what kind of vibe you like if, if you like it and because sometimes you'll just picture yourself living there and sometimes you won't you'll just know you, you'll get onto the street and you'll be like no this this neighborhood is not for me so that's just something to keep in mind lock down the neighborhood and then we can you know keep process processing from there uh and then next from there probably the most important this is probably going to in this day and age especially with rapid home prices increasing um we're going to see going to see is just with the finance so this is really determining what is your budget how much can you afford and a lot of the top three will really depend on on your budget uh and where you can break it but you know the reason why i have it at number four is because like to 
dial down and find out exactly what you're looking for before money really becomes an issue. And then once the money comes an issue, then you know what, let's start and revisit those needs and wants list and maybe let's adjust them accordingly. So, so we can really find, you know, maybe we can find you another neighborhood that really has it. Maybe there's a lot of transitioning neighborhoods these days where some of them do get a bad rap. And so really just revisiting things and uh, things are always changing and, you know, just keeping everything on the table. So a lot of times we'll revisit once we get to the finance stage, uh, start revisiting that needs and want list again, and just make sure it correlates with what you can actually afford and make sure we're making uh, an actual feasible plan going ahead with it so we're saving everybody time and effort and and heartbreak and that sort of thing so just that is another things to do it um oftentimes with a pre-approval so when you're looking at the finance things a pre-approval is pretty much as good as what the paper is written on uh, it's not a whole lot so you can talk to your broker about that uh, or your banker and if you do need a banker feel free to reach out because we do have a lot of um, certified and ones that we definitely do recommend. So I recommend reaching out if you do need a mortgage broker and we'll be able to help you out in that regard. Make sure you're getting taken care of and getting the proper information because it can be quite tedious. There's lots of ins and outs and everybody's situation is different. So I just want to make sure you're getting somebody that is able to work with your situation and, uh, and get you the best possible result. So with the pre-approval, it's, it's not saying that you're absolutely approved for it. They still have to finalize the the numbers, but it really gives you a baseline of, of what kind of range you can get into. So it'll give you a price range, a top end on how much you're willing to spend. It'll give you the payments. And so you can start to budget that way. And you know maybe you can look at your own budget and you know uh, adjust accordingly. So if the mortgage payment is gonna be a little bit higher, but it's gonna get you in that place that you have all those needs and your wants kind of you know, most of those boxes ticked off, then, you know, maybe that's one of those things. Other things that include, they, they will also include, you know, things like property insurance, strata payments, condo fees, that sort of things, property taxes, um, other utilities, maintenance fees. Those will all be factored in when they go to finalize the deal. So they'll kind of have an idea, the mortgage broker, and that's the reason why it's not quite finalized because they don't have a specific numbers with property taxes, strata fees, other fees that might be included in it to know what you can actually afford. So that's the reason why you get a pre-approval first and then you still have to finalize it. So um, oftentimes we'll do an offer uh, with the sub financing subject conditions and we'll go from there. All right, and number five is, uh, and I guess I'm a little bit biased in this regard, uh, being one, but it's really finding a realtor or a real estate agent that really fits with you. You really want to make sure that they fit your vibe, interview realtors, even though you're buying with them. Oftentimes, I think the stat is like 80% of the buyers just go with the first real estate agent they find, which may or may not work for you. Uh, it's completely up to you, but uh, just, you know, go with whoever you're comfortable with. You don't have to pay commission to the realtors. So really, as a realtor, as a real estate agent, I am working on your behalf. So I'm trying to get you the lowest price. I mean, the different, I'm not, we're not out here. Not all of us are out here just to try and collect a check. I really want um, happy, uh, satisfied customers at the end of the day that keep coming back and would recommend me over and over again. So um, just to interview and make sure the, your realtor and make sure the vibe is is there and, and and it works out we'll help provide guidance on documents help you through the whole due diligence process as there's a lot to go each property is different so things to look at neighborhoods to look at especially if you're not familiar with the areas if you're not familiar with the city the town the zoning um, different restrictions that you can in stratas and buildings and that sort of thing we're here i'm here to help you through all that try and save you a lot of time, heartache, and and make the process as easy as possible. So that's where we kind of go from there. So try and make it as stress-free as possible. Number six would be visiting the properties to find the one that you want to buy. So this is just going to schedule showings. And typical buyers, there's stats out there that the average buyer takes about 10 to 15 homes before they make an offer on a purchase. In this market right now, there's not a whole lot of inventory out there. So there, that is uh, that, you know, it could be months before you, um, you you get to put in an offer. So right now it's really being up. The time frames are really being collapsed a little bit. Um, there are not a lot of properties to see. Um, so you're kind of seeing them right as they come up and there's a lot of competition. So you need to act fast in this marketplace. But 
but not all markets are all going to be the same. So it depends on where you're buying, but that's where your real estate agent can help you out with just the local trends, the mark values, that sort of thing. And just know the market and how fast you need to react on certain properties. But when you're intending going to these showings there and you're finding the properties that you think you might want to buy, um, look at the property thoroughly. Definitely ask a lot of questions on it and you know review any items that you might want to purchase so if there's anything you want included in the purchase maybe it's that tv that's on the wall mount some of the things aren't included a lot of them sometimes are like your fridge stove the appliances are normally included dishwasher but just make sure that if there's anything different like those blinds blackout shades that sort of thing sometimes those that there's some gray area so it's just to make sure and you make it known so then we can make it written in the property properly into the contract there things to look at when you're at the homes is you know just look at the storage space anything that's really important to you anything that's you're really looking for so if you need a lot of storage space or if you need the the room layouts or if you need if you're planning on wanting to do a renovation and just make sure that you can you know look into a lot of those things ahead of time um look for any water damage that sort of thing review look at the roof that sort of and the gutters just take a look and just see the overall appearance of the house and really just take a, a close eye and just just see what you can see and see what you can pull out and then what comes next is after you've reviewed all the properties and you really want to make an offer. Well, that's the next step. Number seven is really just making the offer. So you'll just go view properties until you really find the one you feel comfortable with and you see the one that you will be willing to live in and and purchase. And then you just go through with the, the home, the buying process. And that's where the real estate agent will help you out. Um, normally, the, the real estate agents will have a, a list of you know, clauses and stuff like that we normally include. Everybody's different, so it's not all, it's not all cookie cutter, it's not all the same. So everybody's difference is, every purchase is different, everybody's different, and every different property is gonna be different, what we wanna include and what not. So um, those are really what where you wanna lean on to the professionals, but normally you're gonna to look to get financing, put in there, property inspection, title review, professional advice, that sort of thing, just to make sure you know what you're buying and you're making an educated decision when it comes down to it. So you're not potentially getting in over your head uh, with it, maybe that inspection might uncover uh, and go from there. So once you have the offer and after the offer gets accepted, step number eight is really going through the due diligence period. So normally there's two weeks on a due diligence uh, on it. We're seeing different time frames on it. We're seeing homes going um, with unconditional, that is real estate um, term for no subject conditions. So really they just purchased the home, no subject conditions, no financing, no inspection, and they're willing to, to go ahead with it. So that is an unconditional offer oftentimes, and we're seeing it a lot more in this current market, but it's it, as a real estate agent, we I personally do not like that. We like to try and keep in, to, so we can protect you, keep in the contracts, um, what we need to keep in there. So something to keep in mind, but you know, the number ones usually include the, the financing, even with a pre-approval, you know, the, the financing isn't are, you know, really concrete. So we need to go through and make sure it, it is concrete. So you are uh, officially approved through the bank. And, you know, just uh, with the inspection, really just trying to uncover any inspect, any issues with anything. Um, reviewing the property disclosure um, depends on your property there's maybe strata documents that we need to review that sort of thing so every property is going to be different but you're going to have about two weeks to really remove them sounds like a lot of time initially but really get on top of it right away because it uh, the time will fly right past uh, you'll t you'll breathe a sigh of relief that you got the offer accepted but then you got to go to work and uh, start to remove some of the subject conditions so that's something the real estate agents real help you out with but uh make sure you get on that ahead of time make sure you have insurance lined up that sort of thing and number nine this is the most exciting part and this is what everybody's looking for when they're purchasing a house is the move-in day and the closing um but leading up to the closing about two weeks beforehand you'll probably need to uh so after you remove all the subject, you say this property is good for me and we removed all the subject conditions, um, you're going to move in to close the purchase. What you're going to need is about a couple weeks before sign documents at the lawyers to just so they're because there are protecting your best interests. Make sure that everything is going to be transferred uh, on the completion date. In the offer, there is a completion date, uh, adjustment dates and also a possession date. Normally, the completion will be a day before. Uh, the actual possession that gives the lawyers time to really proceed and uh, get everything transferred over so you can get 
your possession um, without many issues, oftentimes, because lawyers, you know, the, their offices aren't open past five. So if you had completion of possession on the same day, something, if there's a hiccups or anything like that, or the, the bank didn't disperse the funds in time, uh, you might not get possession until the next day, which really could hinder your moving. So normally we do possession on the following day. But looking at it, we're gonna complete most of it. You just have to sit down and sign a bunch of doc, you know, just sign some documents. With the lawyers, uh, make sure you have insurance lined up on the closing date, so for when you move in. And uh, with moving, just have your moving trucks ready. Um, have that all planned and ahead of time, just so it, especially if you're moving at peak times, it is really tough sometimes, end of the month, or a lot of the moving trucks, moving vans, even you all are all booked up because a lot of people are moving at the ends of the months, that sort of thing. So just want to make sure that all that's lined up, including transfer of utilities. And the most important thing is have your checks uh, for the deposit and the down payment uh, available. Make sure that's all still available. Make sure before closing that you're not. This is rule number one of purchasing a house. Do not go purchase any major things before the closing date. Um, so don't purchase a car. Purchase that the day after you take possession, uh, if that is something that you want to do. But don't go get any more credit, uh, maxing things out, because that could really change your your position, and the bank can potentially pull your funding. So that's just something to watch out, keep an eye out, and go from there. But the real estate market right now in Kelowna is just burning hot right now, and we're having a lot of people moving here from outside. And if you're looking to move here, feel free to pick up that phone give me a call, shoot me a text message, whatever works for you. I'm here to help you out and navigate this real estate market here in the Okanagan. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button, click subscribe and hit that bell just so you make sure you don't miss out on future videos of what it's like to live here in Kelowna. So you're going to start seeing videos pop up here. Click on those so you learn more about what it's like living here in Kelowna.